Hello everyone, I'm Replay Ty Heretic, and welcome back to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. In the last episode, we finished off the Star 1 MOGA quests, and in this episode, we are going to find out more about this random ship that just appeared out of nowhere, starting with this little feline, the Itinerant Cook. Now, the Itinerant Cook is going to be a very important thing in the long run. Now, that little spot here that you see here, after we finish our first quest, the itinerant cook will become, well, a cook. This cook will allow you to get food skills, which will increase specific abilities, like increasing your health, your defense, your attack, your stamina. Also give you various food skills that might help you in various quests. We don't need an explanation of how training works, because we're actually going to show you. Now, there's two different things that you're going to be doing with the Argosi Captain. You can do a specific trade, which will allow you to trade stuff like this, just basic commodities. You can trade in bulk, and you can select what weapons you want from them. Now, naturally, it doesn't have much right now, which is alright, and we're not going to be trading with them yet. Yes, cancel the trade. And we have the rare trade. We don't have any rare commodities, but I'll show you what they are soon. You can see what they are with an anchor icon. And with this, we can actually get various special goods. One of the goods that we're going to try to go for is the double barbecue spin. Which is what I talked about in the first episode while, you know, using the barbecue spin. Ooh. He has a lot to talk Ooh. about. And with that, he gives us a voucher, and he's done talking. The voucher will allow you to get a free meal with all the food items fresh. That means you get the best possible you get the best possible outcome for your foods. You're gonna want to mix various items together to make sure that you get the best benefits out of them. So it's a wise idea to do that. Put away the iron ore, the macrolide ore, all this stuff we don't need. There we go. We have a lot of stuff to... We have a lot of people trying to talk to us. The Argosi Captain will also give us furnishings that we can use to customize our house. Might not be a very important thing, but, you know... I'm actually, I'm actually really interested in seeing, like, all the stuff that we can get. Alright. Everybody's pretty much talking about the Argosi Captain. And everything. Ah, uh, here we go. This is what I want. Shroom box. The shroom box will allow us to cultivate shrooms, which is a great thing because, like I said before, having shrooms is going to be a very important thing in making the best item that you can get in the game. Potions. And with this, we also can make the insect box, which is perfect. We just, we just kill two birds with one stone by planning early. We can talk to the quest giver, and we can talk to Neko. Oh, crap. Oh, well, I guess we're seeing Port Tanzia. I keep mashing buttons too quickly with that, because you expect it to go a lot f longer than this. But this is Port Tanzia. Port Tanzia is the multiplayer port, or the multiplayer area. This naturally has a lot to give us, but we're not going to be here yet. There is a lot to cover in Port Tanzia because it is the multiplayer hub, so there's a lot to cover. So naturally, we're going to save this for when we start Port Tanzia stuff. And there's a lot to cover. Fast travel back to Mobile Village. Thankfully, it's instantaneous. I'm actually also very surprised at how quickly this game loads. Like, loads levels. It's impressive. It was actually pretty impressive back in 2002 as well. I know that it's, like, just loading... I know that it's just loading small quests. Or, like, loading small areas and not the entire area at once. But it does take a lot to dynamically keep track of things. So, we have a Star 2 quest, and we unlocked a new area, the Sandy Plains. Oh, that's the name. Altaroth. Well, I guess I would have found that out sooner or later. We can also hunt the Great Jagi, and we can also deliver more monster guts from the Delex, which are in the Sandy Plains. I'm actually going to go to Sandy Plains to get some various items that we do need to improve stuff on this weapon. Uh, 
uh, let's see here, forge. So far, we can't really make anything. We can make alloy armor, but we're not going to. Especially since the leather armor is good as it is right now. So we're just gonna leave right now. Uh, I guess I'll cultivate the farm when we finish this quest. Harvest tours are naturally just you going around the area and finding stuff. And we are going to need some various items from this place to improve the stuff later in the long run. Anyways, the Sandy Plains also introduces a new status effect that will ruin your day if you're not prepared for it. Without further ado, let's show it off. We have 50 minutes to run around, and after 3 minutes, we will get our call pass ticket and be able to leave this quest. Okay, gives us a bug net. Thank you, old man. Gives us ration. That's even better. Yeah, the Felvine bomb. Perfect. The Felvine bomb isn't really important, but the rations are fine. So in areas 8, 10, and 11... 8, 10... 8, 10, and 9. 8, 9, and 10, I should say. In areas 8, 9, and 10, you will have to deal with heat stroke. Heat stroke is a status effect that can be neutralized with cool drinks. Cool drinks are an item that you will get during quests here. When you use a cool drink, you can neutralize all heat stroke effects. And heat stroke, as I will bring up, right now, because I feel as though I've been talking about cool drinks more than the actual effect. Heat stroke will slowly decrease your health as long as you are in an area that is hot. There is, there is a second part of this. When you get hot drinks, you can endure the cold, and having to deal with... I think it's called hypothermia in this game. I don't know why. Hypothermia in this game is... A <clears throat> is a status effect that will make your stamina decline faster and also make your stamina bar decrease faster. So it's a good idea to have hot drinks there as well. We won't be dealing with uh, with, with hypothermia for a while. I picked up an aura stone piece. What is that? Oh, it's a count item. That's probably why I've never heard of it. <laughs> like, an aura stone. Oh, as you see, we just got the item. It's actually two minutes. I'm gonna get rid of all these mailings real quick. That should be good. They do drop stuff at times, so it's a good idea to defeat them. They can steal items from you unless you have fell vines. They will naturally grab fell vines as long as you have them in your inventory, but other than that, they will usually just steal a random item in your inventory. And sometimes they can steal the very expensive stuff, so it's best to get rid of them. Let's get rid of these nah, offerings real quick. A lot of these monsters sound like... A lot of these monster names sound like they're just... Uh, some, sound like somebody came up with them while they had a cold one. I, well, I can't really make a sick, no, a sick voice. I was sick, but I don't have a sick voice. Uh, well, there's a lot of mushrooms. Parachutes. This should be good with making paralyzing shots. And maybe coatings. I don't know, I've always bought coatings, but it seems like a very important skill to learn early on to make your coatings. A lot of unique mushrooms, that's for sure. I'm actually going to run through Area 9 and pick up some... I think I need cactus flowers. So I'm going to real quick run with that. So as you see, the heat stroke is causing our health to decline slowly. The same effect is apparent in another lighter area. In fact, it seems as though heat stroke is the most used status effect in the game. Because hypothermia only affects you in one area, nowhere else. But heat stroke is pretty much the one that's always there. Uh, 
Now we don't see any Delax running around here. Oh, perfect cactus flowers. I think I need two. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> what's, what's up with my luck? These are a lot of cactus flowers. Is this just all cactus flowers? Oh yeah, there we go. Fire herbs. That's also a good thing. Fire herbs, sleep herbs. Huh. Got a lot more chiggy. Let's run through area five. Actually, no. Let's let's because area five has a lot of chiggy in it. Don't want to deal with chiggy. Area six does have a lot of mining points. Oh, I, I mean a lot. It can have upwards of six or eight at a time. So it's pretty prominent. Okay, there's some... Oh, I just forgot the name already. Hmm. That's probably... Gonna, that's actually the one monster that I, re that I remembered the name firmly. But the moment that I stopped thinking about having to deal with them, I just forget the name. We will have to come back here to do the Crystal Bones quest. Because that is a mining quest. We have here some Renoplos. They are needed to make Renoplos armor, which is semi important in a way. Not really if you're not planning on making the armor to begin with. Right, let's grab ourselves the Pop Pass ticket and get out of here. The secret stash does give us 100% though, which is good. Now comes the question. I'll probably save that hunt for one quest. I'll just do multiple quests in this one. Go just do multiple gathering quests. Like I said before, the first two or three stars in the game are primarily going to be you learning about the game. Like, star two, they're going to introduce to you a big monster hunt. Like, a first boss monster hunt. But in star three, they're going to teach you about capturing... And then after that, you're pretty much going to be just hunting a ton of monsters. As I said before, this game does have an odd learning curve. If you've played a game previously in the series, then you're going to have a better time playing it than, you, than other people will be. Let's go to the farm and activate a cutscene for the shroom box. Which is good. Look at that. Look at that texture quality. I don't really care for the graphics in this game, to be completely fair. I don't really care that they're kind of odd-looking. But, I mean, a game is a game. It doesn't matter what the graphics look like. As long as they're bearable to look at, then they're fine. Okay, since we improved our shroom box, we should be able to make more faster. Which is what we need to do, because blue mushrooms are hard to find. Yeah, there we go. We can do five cycles now. See, we have an insect box now, and we have a shroom box. This is perfect. Perfect. Doing great, guys. Alright. Uh, no, nothing on the forecast. Actually, tomorrow's gonna be herbivores breeding, which we can get some supersized dung for later. I'm gonna put away all these items real quick, though. Now, the good thing about... Now, the good thing about doing all this is that because of how the shops work in this game, we can buy a ton of herbs at any point, so we're just going to be focusing on making mushrooms. Let me get rid of these coatings real quick. I mean, not coatings, good. let me get rid of that ammo real quick. So naturally, if we go to the shop here, over here, then we can buy... Oh right, I never talked to you before. We can buy a ton of, we can buy a ton of herbs. Which is going to be important. Also, we can buy the cool and hot drinks that we're going to be needing. I'm going to buy an herb to polish off the ten, the, polish off the extras that I have here. Then I'm just going to buy a set of herbs. Just a couple sets of herbs. And from there, we should be able to get ourselves uh, potions ready for a hunt. I'm going to get some power coatings set up. Wait, I don't want to buy it. Oh, I just bought a set of them. Oh well. Coatings are coatings. 
Okay, can only use close range, power, exhaust, and paint coatings. Naturally, I'm gonna buy a full set of paint so I don't have to worry about constantly having more. Yep, so, as you see, I had 12,000 zenny, but now I don't. That's how quickly, that's how quickly buying coatings will get you out of your money. That's why playing as a gunner so, like, playing with gunner so early is gonna be a problem. Now, if I didn't get the monster fluid, uh, if I didn't get the monster fluid from earlier, the bug hunt quest where you have to slay all these Alteroths, if you, if, they give you poison smoke bombs, which, if you have poison smoke bombs, you can let the, uh, Wow, I forgot the name already, and I just saw it. Alteroth. 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 Okay. Uh, they give you poison coating, or poison smoke bombs, in the supply box. If you swarm them around you and you use this, you can poison them, and they die in about 15, 20 seconds. If you carve them, they will sometimes give you monster fluid. Which is important in upgrading your in, in, er, in upgrading or allowing you to use your uh, insect box. So I'm just gonna give him a kick. Kicking is just as easy as pressing the plus button or the start button, and then all of them will swarm around you. From here, all you need to do is let them swarm around you, close area. Let's get that final one over here. Come on. There we go. And then all we need to do is spawn. And then they all have the poison effect. And we just let them... And we just let them die. And then all you need to do is carve. And there you go. Monster fluid. However, since we don't need monster fluid, we can just move on. Since the poison smoke bombs aren't a quest, aren't a supply item, we keep this. Because you can just as easily make poison smoke bombs with... Um, with a poison shroom and a bomb casing. I think that's what it is. Uh, we have some Malinxes. Malinxes are not exactly my favorite little things to deal with because they constantly chase you and at any point they can steal your items. I would bring along Falvines so I don't have to deal with them, but I didn't this time and that was a mistake on my part. Go fetch easy. Let me just avoid these things. I hate them. They, they, I hate them. <laughs> oh, okay, these are... These are big Alteroths. They have, they hit harder and they can survive more hits. That should be, that should be... 8 out of 12. Here, I'm just gonna kill them like this. Hold on. Get in the air. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Okay, that's 11 out of 12. Ooh, a couple of mining points. Now's a good time for me to get these mining points. As you see, now that I have coatings, uh, I can use them at any point. If I press X and A at the same time, I will apply a coating if I have the weapon out. If I switch the coatings at any point, like if I switch the coating that I have on the hotbar, it will unequip the coating that I have on, and I will have to re-equip the coat. So, naturally, I'm going to have to keep in mind that at any point I could mess up and royally get myself killed. <clears throat> there we go. Fun times. Now, naturally, the fang ones are a bit more aggressive. Just them seeing you. The other ones, the non-fang, the non- the small fang one. They will only attack if provoked. So, keep that in mind, Joe. Keep that in mind. You would be annoyed too if somebody ruined your day by tearing apart your friend just to get some fluid out of their bodies. You would hate your day too. Now, naturally, I'm going to avoid these malinxes. There's a fine line between malinxes and felines, by the way. Malinxes are black furred. But felines are white furred. You can see both of them at any point in the game at random intervals. That's a lot of seagulls. And I 
I could go for sap plants if I wanted to. That's on the top, though. Mushrooms, perfect. Uh, well, we got time for more. One more quest. Should be fun. Should be a lot of fun. All right, nothing to talk about here. We put away the stuff that I have. The stuff. Store items. Put away the smoke, put the smoke bomb. I do still have the poison coatings equipped, but it's not like it matters to me. Because you only have, there are only eight bow coatings in the game. There's like 17 different types of ammo, though. What was I doing again? Oh, right. <laughs> wow. Uh, so you're, we'll save the hunt, we'll save the Great Jiggy hunt for later. Let's do the Crystal Bones quest. That's a gathering so as you see here, here's our ingredients. I'd actually go with a uh, with a grain and a vegetable to get to get a to get an element to get an element resist and a defense boost. However, since we're gathering, I think it's fish and milk. Yes, fish and dairy to get gathering skills. We get feline woodsman, which has the same effect as our as our gatherer's whim. We gained oxygen for some reason. Oh well, we're not gonna be going underwater. There's only like th actually I don't know how many part how many areas in the game have underwater sections. I know it's deserted island, then the third area. Yeah, that's it for primary areas. They do give you a pickaxe, but they give you the but they give you the old one which breaks a lot faster. Alright, that's another thing. This is the nighttime area. Yeah, take a nice look at it, because the detail in this game is very pretty in the sky in the sky. It's very pretty. I love it. In the nighttime, what makes you get heat stroke naturally doesn't we're not going to be going into the deep area for, huh, you know, meteor shower. We don't have to go into areas 8, 9, or 10, though, because we can get a lot of crystal bones just in area 6. There are some points here in area 4, like this specific little part tucked away. We're still running on the MOBA, MOBA Mega Pickaxe, by the way. Hello. I'm mining here. Ow! Cheeky. I can't wait to kill your father in the next episode. <laughs> we'll do the monster guts and then the Jiggy hunt there. The Jiggy hunt will probably take the duration of the episode, though. So people will naturally get their fix of hunter monster. Monster. Monster hunter. Getting a lot of aura stone pieces. And a lot of unneeded whetstone. Ah, uh, there's more melinxes. I call them melinxes, but I think they're melinxes. I don't know. Let me just... Let me just drop them. Let me just drop them. Another thing I did forget to note is that... Uh, you don't have to use the right stick. And in fact, on the 3DS, if you don't have the Circle Pad Pro attachment, you will have to use the D-pad to move around the camera. That's, that thing is still very applicable in the Wii U version, when even though you do have a right stick, you can still use the D-pad. Not really recommended, though. Where does one get crystal bones again? I thought you could get them here. Is the I don't have them. What the 
hell? <laughs> I can't remember where the crystal bones are. Okay, as you see, our... Actually, no, I don't even think our stamina depletes any faster. It's just that we lose our stamina bar faster. We just lose ticks on our stamina bar faster. I cannot remember for the life of me where... Crystal bones are. This might be a problem. I am gonna take that. I am gonna take a, take a hot drink though, just so I don't have to deal with the sheer cold. I could actually look it up right now using the MH3 U decks if I wanted to, or I could use Kira Nico. Which would be a lot faster. I should have researched this. I remember crystal bones being a lot easier to gather, though. Let's just run off real quick. Might be an area one. Unknown skull. Unknown skull. Stone. Oh. Great. I have no idea where crystal bones are. I am legitimately confused and concerned. So what about over here? There we go. We found them. Stop it. Uh oh. My Mega Pickaxe finally broke. And I only have one crystal bone. bad. <laughs> Should have picked up more iron pickaxes when I was in the shop. Yeah, that slipped my mind a little bit. The Trials and Tribulations of Monster Hunter. I think you only get one old pickaxe too, which sucks. Oh, there goes our first tick of health, our first tick of stamina. Should be fine though, I do have rations. No, I don't have to pick them up. <laughs> Damn it. Well, I guess this is a good idea to make trips then. Let's grab this. Oh, we got three. That's perfect. Should we take these rations? Let's see, what does this say about them? Slightly boosts current and max stamina. Most hunters agree, it's gross. Well, it's it's health. There's an item similar to rations, I believe, called Tansia chips. I don't know if I've brought this up before. Tansia chips are in Port Tansia, which we just visited. On accident. Go me. Uh, looks like we can transition to area 7 from area 6. Perfect. Looks fine by me. Uh, right, here we are. Area 11. There's a gathering point. It hasn't left. Oh, now it's giving me a lot of points. Damn it, Chiki. Leave me alone. I'm gathering crystal bones. Oh, there we go. That wasn't so bad. Didn't have to give up the quest for anything. There is an item in the game that would allow us to quickly... to more quickly get there. To more quickly get back to the home area. It's called the Farcaster. Farcasters are a godsend, but there's not really much of a use to of not really much of a use of them. That's a good idea when you're doing gathering quests like this. Because, you know, 
you're not dealing with a big monster and you don't need to get away fast. However, in the next episode, we should be dealing with our first big monster. Which is going to be fun. In fact, I'm going to do that episode right after this one, because I stopped after two episodes the first session. This is the session after. In case you want a little bit behind the scenes work, I usually don't record in longer than one hour sprees. However, this is one of those games that I need to record in more than one hour sprees. Because it's fucking Monster Hunter! I wonder how many other people were surprised that that Ego Raptor was so fucking into Monster Hunter. I was actually kind of surprised that most of the Game Grumps were actually into Monster Hunter. It kind of surprised me. Because it, this is one of those games where you're like, yeah, it looks like it's nothing special. And then you play it for 100 hours and you're like, okay, let's find out what armor set I can make next. And I love it for that. Right, get a bunch of that. Got some armor sphere stuff in our armor, even though we're not going to do this. Perfect. <clears throat> oh. So, in the next episode of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, we are going to finish off the Star 2 quests. That was actually kind of fast. We covered four quests in one episode. Not too bad of a record, actually. I think we did, anyways. Right, I wasn't spacing out. Good. Okay. If you like this video, please give a like. If you want to know more about Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, or need some help with carve rates or anything about specific missions, then feel free to drop a comment and I will help you as much as I possibly can. If you really like my videos, then feel free to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Replay Ty Heretic, and I will see you in the next episode.